hanging around. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. that was another valuable lesson. Andrew, you made a comment earlier that I'd like to explore. You said everybody that thinks they're in radio thinks that they can do voiceovers. So what is different then? It's a different way of communicating. When you're a jock, you very rarely are particularly you. Uh, a lot of it's hypey, you know, jock talk. But when you're doing a voiceover, a lot, lot of this is conversational, it's intimate, it's, you know, one-on-one kind of... It's a different different way of using um, the way you communicate. Uh, it is much more intimate doing voiceover, which I'm sure some radio people would disagree with, but... Um, <laughs> You know, radio is a different. It's a different beast. You know, you're an entertainer. Yeah. You're up there. It's basically you're up there singing. Where, when you're doing voiceover, you're in there acting, and that's probably the difference. How long did it take you to get a handle on that? I had to learn pretty quickly because um, that's the only income I had. So it was a, a, an absolute learning curve, and a, and I was lucky that I worked with some really good people, who taught me some fantastic tricks. Really, like bright. Directors or other voiceover artists? Directors. Yeah. And there were some really, really weird tricks that you would think, how does that work? But, you know, you're constantly you're falling over something or you're just not getting something right. And it'd be a thing like, just cross that, you know, take out that letter and, and write it upside down. <laughs> and then have another crack at it. And, of course, you're, as soon as you get to that point your brain all of a sudden changes. It's looking, what's that? And refocuses everything and bingo, you've solved the problem. Another thing that was uh, to articulate well, if it's quite a wordy piece of copy, is to almost purse your lips. It actually makes what's coming out of your mouth much cleaner and more articulate by pursing lips, which is another Hmm. bizarre trick. Well, let me ask you something about copy. Now, I've found that, and I'm sure it's true, that things that read well on the paper don't necessarily speak well. True. But yet, I'm sure you have people that are writing copy for you that don't understand that. Is there some sort of leeway or freedom to change things if you have to in order to make it speak better? Hopefully, if you're in a session and you have a really good audio engineer, they will make that happen. Otherwise, you're kind of stuck with what you've got. And and it's funny with copy. You can look at copy and it just looks like copy. The only time you find out that it's not right is when it doesn't work and you, you're mm. stumbling. The best copy, you you know, you know when you've got great copy, when you just it just flows out, it just comes out. That's great copy. And I, and I, I could put two bits of copy together and I, I couldn't tell you why one works and one doesn't. But as soon as you start reading it, you just know, you just feel it. It just works. Is there something to the punctuation that's used and how it's used that makes it easier? And the reason why I say that, Andrew, is because when I do voiceovers for one thing or another here, it's usually some of my product that I'm doing my courses or whatever, I find that a comma in the right place will make all the difference because it it indicates to me that you should take a breath here. And if you have to actually lay in another part, you can do it fairly easily. Uh, yeah, I, because I think what when you see a, a piece of, like if you read a book and the punctuation's correct, that works really well with a book. But when you're reading copy, there's a different kind of punctuation and sometimes you have a half a beat somewhere, which if it was a piece of written word, you wouldn't put it there. But it just makes more sense when you're saying it. Um, it's all about the, you know, and the, and the other thing is giving air, you know, it's like, Sometimes that that piece of air between those two words makes those words really powerful. Mm. Uh, there's nothing worse than someone with copy that's just overwritten, and then they wonder why it doesn't have the emotion they were hoping for. Or in actual fact, the you know it's the old less is more theory. You can you can make some amazing statements using very little words, but a ton of emotion will come out of it. Like you just did. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what is the one thing that most people don't know about voiceovers and voiceover actors? Well, it's funny. Even people who do it, they're, they're, everyone's got their own skill base. And the smart ones are the ones who have a knowledge of just about all of it.
wanted to do an ISDN from Sydney to Melbourne, um, the client was in Sydney and the studio was in Melbourne, I would go to the studio in Melbourne, who would then do an ISDN link to a studio in Sydney, uh, so the client could be on the session, you know. Yeah. So there's two studios getting money out of this. Now, of course, if you've got a studio like this, then I just beam into wherever. And in some cases, like a lot of my clients, I don't even talk to them. In fact, some I've never even talked to. Um, mm -hmm. I just get copy and, you know, everyone's happy with the way I'm doing it. And that's it. It just comes in. Are you still getting work through an agent? Yeah, I've got uh, an agent in Sydney, which is Scout Voice Management. And then um, I'm not signed to an agent in the US, but um, Abrams in New York uh, send me things from time to time. Uh, a lot of my clients that are overseas, uh, I look after myself, and that's um, Channel News Asia out of Singapore. So I'm the, their um, network voice, and um, a radio station in Dubai called Dubai Eye, I do. And then uh, local radio stations or networks, the Triple M network here for their regional stations, and there's 32 of those. Uh, I'm the brand voice of that. And then whatever else comes in, corporate narration stuff, whatever, all sorts of things, events, you know, you name it. I'll take it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Is there something that you don't want to take or you turn down? And I say this only because maybe it's not fun or it's, uh, and, and fun meaning it's a lot of work or unnecessary hassle. Does that happen to you? Uh, yes, there are things that I feel uh, that I don't, I wouldn't do. And, um, but it's difficult because you kind of go, well, how, how, where, do you, where do you draw the line? Do I say, I don't want to do McDonald's because I think their food is bad for people? Or do I say, I don't want to do uh, a read for 